Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar from Alpha Lines Den Ministries in Derry, Pennsylvania. And I'd like to thank you for tuning in today Hallelujah. for this special edition of Crossing Paths Ministries. Thank You're you, in for a treat today, I'm telling you. So please get on the phone, call your friends and family, get them all together. You're getting ready to hear of a testimony of a life that's been transformed by the power of God. Yeah. It's my privilege right now to introduce to you Don Reed Sr., the founder of this tremendous ministry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ron. And this man I knew uh, years and years ago, and he was an encourager to me then, but uh, how we crossed paths, he's gonna tell you that. But I wanna tell you something, if you're out there today and you got a problem, and you might have drugs or whatever it is, but today we want to hit, hit on Teen Challenge, an amazing organization that helps people. Amen. And I want to tell you something. I've always promoted Teen Challenge as long as I got saved. I've had many people from them on this or, uh, a TV program, and uh, they don't cut any <clears throat> corners, but they can tell you there is hope. Amen. There is hope. And my guest here today is Robert Pitzer from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Originally, that's where I met him. And he had a young one in there too, it's so young, you know. But anyways, he was also involved in a lot of things that he grew up and so forth. So, uh, Ron, Rob, would you just tell us how you all started, where it is, how you <coughs> met me, whatever you think. Yeah, well, my name is Rob Pitzer, uh, like Don said, from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Um, <clears throat> I went to Shenango High School, Shenango Grade School in Newcastle. November of 1979, I moved to Escondido, California. Um, when I got to Escondido, California, I was, uh, uh, had my fifth stepdad out there. His name was Ted, and uh, very evil situation, you know. I, it was not a good situation for me, and uh, bad home life environment. And anyway, uh, I was watching uh, this couple, because my mom was a private duty nurse. She was out there, uh, and, and someone that worked there taking care of this elderly couple uh, it was pretty much babysitting for me. I just filled in for just a few days while this lady went on vacation. And this lady there uh, kept telling me, uh, could you call this number, this church? And I, my husband needs prayer. My husband needs prayer. So I called the number, and uh, I, I said, this lady, I said, her husband needs prayer. Uh, his name was, uh, the guy I talked to was uh, Brother Larry Gibson. He showed up at this uh, residence, and he prayed for the couple and for the gentleman. And in his prayer, uh, he thanked the Lord for the opportunity that we can know Jesus Christ is our Savior and that we could know heaven is our home when we died. And he asked me if I'd uh, like to invite the Lord into my life. And I said, you mean we can know that heaven is our home <laughs> when we died? And he, he opened up with Scripture, and he says, it showed us uh, John 3.3, 3, you know. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So he led me in the sinner's prayer. I accepted the Lord into my heart, uh, was active in the uh, youth group. He ended up being a youth pastor at this church that uh, I went to for a couple years, and uh, uh, I accepted the Lord into my heart, but I wasn't really... I mean, this brother Larry Gibson would take me out on a regular basis and buy me iced tea, and we'd read through the book of John, and he'd try to disciple me, and I was on fire for the Lord. But, um, you know, as years progressed, I, I got into drugs and alcohol, Don, and uh, it took a hold of my life. And, um, and how old was you then, Rob? I was in high school. I was like Still in 10th in grade. School. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I got away from the Lord. Drugs and alcohol took a hold of my life. And 20 years later, uh, we moved back here. I moved back here to Newcastle, Pennsylvania. And uh, drugs took me to a place, sin took me to a place I never wanted to go. Mm. It took me so much farther than I wanted to go. Long story short, it was uh, September 28th or 29th, 2016, I overdosed. And... Uh, I ended up uh, uh, a week later waking up from a coma, and I was at Sharon Regional Hospital, but because I live in Newcastle, uh, I woke up from this coma, and there's all these people around me, you know, uh, worked at the hospital, asking me uh, my name, and uh, how do you know where you're at? And I, I just said, yeah, I'm in a hospital, because I could tell that. And uh, they said, well, what hospital? And I said, Jameson, because that's Newcastle. And the lady uh, that asked me that question rolled her eyes back and said, he don't even know where he's at. 
Here I was at Sharon Regional Hospital, and uh, uh, the doctor told me, uh, you don't know how lucky you are. Uh, you were uh, in a coma, in complete organ failure. I really didn't think you was going to make it. And uh, that's how the recovery process started. I tried secular rehab at that point because I, I had a few IDs, a few DUIs pending. And uh, January 28th of that year, they had to cut me out of my truck, mm. uh, hitting a telephone pole. So I was going through the legal system, and I actually took a deal on one of the DUIs eight hours earlier, uh, and I had my court No, the, these DUIs were after you overdosed. Is that uh, right? These, these were I before I overdosed. Before you overdosed. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So... Um, when I overdosed, I had my court papers in my uh, pocket that they put me on probation. So right when I woke up from the coma, pretty much uh, my probation officer was there with handcuffs and, you know, just smiling. So I had to go through the system. They took me to a secular rehab after I, you know, had to be, I was incarcerated for a few months. They took me to a secular rehab. I went through that and uh, was able to, you know, get out of there and stay clean and sober for a few weeks. Uh, it just didn't work for me. And one thing I did learn in the secular rehab, though, uh, and I have the, uh, a, a paper here. Um, well, it's over there, but I can tell you what it says. In one of the readings of Narcotics Anonymous, it says, when we get to the bitter end of our addiction, uh, what is there left to do? We can go on to the simple end of jail's institution or death, or we can find a new way to live. Mm. And I knew that Jesus Christ was, was my only hope. In NA, they can say your higher power is a, a flagpole or a right, doorknob. Yeah. But if you put your trust in that doorknob, I can promise you it's going to turn on you. Right. You put your trust in Jesus Christ, and, and he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And uh, uh, then I, I went to Teen Challenge at the Western Pennsylvania uh, Induction Center. It was um, in September, September 20th of this last year, and there, that was the vehicle that God used to really get a hold of my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. Amen. How did, and, you, how uh, did you hear about Teen Challenge if you were in sort of state of confusion? Did someone well, tell you about Teen Challenge? Yeah, I was at the, um, uh, the rehab, secular rehab, and you know they're using higher power as anything. Mm. And I was halfway through it, and I said, look, either take me back to Newcastle and drop me off or get me to a place where I can say Jesus Christ is my higher right. power. So you couldn't even say it at the meetings. It was just higher power, in other words. Yeah. Okay. Uh, higher power. Long story short, 48 hours later, Teen Challenge had a bed for me. And uh, they, wow. they accepted me. They, uh, you know, I cannot tell you the amazement I had in my life how my life became uh, anew again. Sure. The induction center in Pittsburgh, uh, the director there, uh, Dave Lewis, and my counselor is also a pastor, Pastor Dennis Robb. Uh, they had a major impact in my life, uh, Dawn, that they helped me. Uh, and I, I went three and a half months at the induction center in Pittsburgh, in Cheswick, and then I got transferred to the... Um, uh, training center in Rearsburg, uh, and that's where I'm at now, Don. You know, I, I, I noticed when you left California, right? You were mm -hmm. coming back here. You were on drugs. Were you on drugs when you were coming to my prayer meeting? Remember? How, no, how, well, how did that? Tony, you may I struggled. I, I, I uh, once in a while. I, yeah, I, I had an addiction there, and I remember you giving, praying with me, you telling me about the Lord. And that was when a guy by the name of Dr. Tate and Tony Marinelli and I were going faithfully to these different Bible studies. And um, I was living for the Lord for a couple years there. You helped me out a lot back then, Don, with just praying for me. But uh, I just, when Dr. Tate died, I remember we went to a hospital, and you and I, and Dr. Tate was on a ventilator. Once he died... Uh, I, I stopped going to these Bible studies regularly, and that's when I stopped going to your Bible study, and I just was overwhelmed with uh, sure. the addiction again. And, and I was living in my addiction up until I overdosed. Could uh, you do me a favor? Sometimes people hear, teen, they hear about teen, you know, uh, teen Challenge. What is a pro, what is a, and quickly, how can, what can, is it likely that you go there and you stay there and they teach you or? Yeah, what's our program? Yeah, what's our program? Yeah, like? well, they have, um, 
I'm in the discipleship program. That's the long-term program. Uh, they uh, recently had opened up a detox uh, in Rearsburg and a short-term 30-day program where uh, if you have insurance or whatever, uh, they will get you the help. Uh, they will drive and pick you up 24-7, no matter if it's 2 or 3 in the morning. That's that, good. And a lot of the people that went through the 30-day program, they actually come over to the long term, and that's the ultimate goal, to get them into the discipleship program to, where the, it's, it's biblical-based. It's biblical-based where we have Bible classes throughout the day. Uh, we, we, uh, the Bible says, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. I have hid thy word in my heart mm-hmm. that I might not sin against thee. Right. We have Bible memorization for our classes there, our Bible classes there. And it's all God. And we have chapel several times a week. We have chapel every morning uh, except for Saturday. We have church at night there. And we're, I'm part of a ministry um, called Holy Ground. And uh, Brother Ethan here is, uh, uh, for all the students, he's the leader of that ministry. And we go to different churches, giving our testimony. Uh, I've had the opportunity to actually pre- preach uh, at a church in um, through the Holy Ground Ministry. How, how did you meet him? Uh, it Teen Challenge. It teen Challenge. And you're how old? Are you? I'm 25 years old. So you're uh, you've been through the program too, or? I'm currently a student in the program, so I'm two months away from graduating and completing the program. Okay, so that's that. I, that's when it's, it's old. I don't want to say old people, but my age. Older people involved in that too, as well as young, right? Yes, it, they actually Teen Challenge changed the name recently to a, a Adult and Teen Challenge. Um, so they have all ages. Uh, uh, yeah, because the Dove Word Drugs doesn't have any feelings at all. He'll take you if you're eight or 80. Right. Let let me ask you one question because addicts and everybody who deals with this has this problem. Do you remember, okay, you accepted Jesus when you were young, then all of a sudden you overdosed. What was the thing, where do you think, what was the first pill or what was the first drug or what do you think really started your journey? Well, what do you think that was? I'm glad you asked me that. Yeah. What started my journey? Right. Like I said, when I got saved and born again, yeah. accepted the Lord yeah. in my heart, mm-hmm. Pastor Larry Gibson discipled me. Right. Yeah. Told me to read Proverbs every morning yep. because there's 31 chapters in Proverbs and usually 31 days of the month. Yep. And I did that consistently. I was going to church when the doors are open. Where my problem yep. started, stopped is when I stopped picking up the Word of God and reading God's Word daily, when I stopped going to church when the doors were open, mm-hmm. then the devil can get in and he can man, manifest mm-hmm. uh, you know, problems in your life. Yep. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, the Bible says. Mm-hmm. But you know, too, a lot of people, when I counsel with them around here, around here uh, a lot of people say, well, uh, I knew I, I knew I was doing wrong, and so did you, right? Yes, sir. I mean, once, you know, you, these guys that lie, they come in and I'll get a counsel with them and talk to them and say, well, my wife did this, my wife. I said, it's not your wife's problem, it's your problem. Right. right. So I knew what I was doing wrong, but I didn't know how to get, I wasn't like you, I wasn't saved. So, right, you knew exactly what you were doing because the seed was planted, right? right? Right, that's true, Don. When we're in a battle like that, Rob, and what I see in your life and so many other people is this, is the um, stakes are higher. Okay, this is what I'm saying. Back when in Dawn's day or even my day, you drink a beer or smoke a joint, right? Yes. But now, if you make one wrong turn, and that's what people need to know. If we drop a, a, a boulder off the building, right? Right. It's going to hit the bottom. What we're trying to do now is catch people halfway in like a panic zone or the end zone and say, okay, we got to stop this issue, right? Right. But if we could ever figure out what it is, and like you said, here's the answer. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. That, that's yeah. that's the perfect answer. You couldn't have gave a better answer yeah. because it's the truth. Yeah. Drugs. It, it's a new game, ball game here. People are dying by the minute. Yeah. I mean, we have a, a drug overdose epidemic that uh, Satan has taken people out dramatically, and I thank God for Teen Challenge. It got me to a place where I was surrounded by godly men of men of God mm. in a safe environment where I can be fed the Word of God. Praise I can God. hear preaching. Uh, I've seen the, the men there at the uh, Western Pennsylvania Adult and Teen Challenge that really are sold out for Christ. And they have a passion. Dave Lewis, the director there, has a true passion to help people. And he helped me. 
And that's where I could, uh, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. I was in an environment where it was a safe environment where I could hear preaching, read the word of God, and I didn't have the attacks by the enemy coming at me. Mm -hmm. So I got a foundation in me, and I thank God for, number one, Jesus Christ. Right. And, and Teen Challenge was a vehicle that God used to literally give me life. Did someone have to come up with money to go to Teen Challenge? Or did they, is there a charge or something like that? You know, uh, for the long-term discipleship program, uh, I haven't paid a nickel. And, and most people there don't have it. Uh, they rely on uh, the support from the community and churches. And, and it's, it's a ministry that money is not the issue. Money is not the issue. They will take anybody. They will come and get you 24-7. Is that locally here too? Is there, is there a, a... Yeah. I know the induction in Western Pennsylvania. The number there is 724-265-4100. Pastor Dave Lewis is the director there. Uh, if they don't directly help you, and uh, they will give you the 800 number where you get screened, and, and, and then you'll get you into an induction program. The Lord just stopped me here. I want somebody, if there's somebody out there that wants, needs a ride, I'll provide, Crossing Pass will provide for the cost of the gasoline or whatever to get them, or I'll get somebody to drive them there, wherever, yeah. okay? That's why I, I just got to do what God said. They, yeah. might not, they might have a, no money in their pocket, and they want to go. So I'm just telling, I'm going to add that in right now, if you don't mind. Mm. I want to get back real quickly, though. Once you got into this comfort zone with the people you're around, right? Yes, sir. You know, it's like once you get saved, you get different friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, can't yeah. you can't hang out with the same people that you did before, right? Right. right. And that's what, that's what being born again means. Christ, you know, Amen. you're not, uh, you're not instant McDonald Christianity either, we preach, right? Right. It take, that's why you have to grow. And the only way you can grow is, like I said, is pick up the Word of God. Praise the Lord, John. And, I, and I'm so proud of you because I knew when Patty Dunn and Tony Marnelli and you came to my prayer meetings and then you step yeah. com, kept coming and kept, then you stopped. You said and, many prayers over me, Donna. Yes, right in, right in my house with my first wife, Donna. Yeah. And we used yes. to have 50 people in my other house. Amen. I had I remember Rosano from Newcastle, the pro football player who played with uh, yeah. Cincinnati. He come up one time. I had yeah, yeah, had of, uh, Italian guy. Yeah, so yeah. so some plant, some water. Amen. Maybe back in your young childhood or your childhood, you know, and some we're gonna get you back to give your testimony because I want younger ones. Joyce, you have to remember yeah. this, honey. We're gonna get him to back back on the TV. He agreed already. He Amen. didn't say, "Oh no, I'm so important. I can't do this. I can't do that." Excuses. Amen. You, you, there's no secret service Christianity in the body of Christ. Am Amen. I right? Amen. Amen. Right, brother. Thorn, if I could say one more thing. My testimony is that of David. In Psalms 40, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise under our God. Many shall see it in fear and trust in the Lord. And that's what he did for me at Teen Challenge. He established my goings and he put a new song in my heart. I just want to preach God's word and tell people about the love of Jesus. Because like it says in John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's what it's all about, right, Don? It's as simple as we say in our, in our messages on Christ. Believe. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, right? Praise the Lord. So Amen, many God. people say, well, I don't feel nothing, I don't see nothing. But if you go back to the scriptures, right, you're not saved by feelings. No. Because, you know, feelings, you can take a drink, you can take a dirty book, you can do this, you can go to a football game, you can go to a wedding, you go to a funeral, you can get right. feelings. How you get but saved is what it says in Romans. 10, 9, 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the de dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, Don? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're preaching now. <laughs> we, we, I learned scripture at Teen Challenge. They Amen. teach us that. That's what set you free. Yeah, amen. See, amen. Jesus said they come to have life, that he come, that you would have life and have life more, more abundantly. abundantly. Praise and whom the Son sets free, it's he's free, free indeed. indeed. So that's the problem for everybody out there that's watching us. That's the answer to your problem. 
It's Jesus. You know, we can have all these rhymes and riddles and this and that and ups and downs, but I'm telling you, my friend, it comes down to a commitment. I mean, we're battling. We have an adversary. He's called the devil. And he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus is the answer for you. Praise so we're going to take a break right now. So here's Pastor Don Reed with something to think about. Today, I want to just leave a thought with you out there that when I first got saved, I always say, me use my as an illustration, and sometimes it's you out there today, but somebody say, well, it's so difficult to get saved. Well, you know, the scripture that I want to give you today is Acts 16, 31. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, that's a good statement for somebody that just don't understand. You don't have to try to figure out God. You just got to believe. Now you go back to in the Old Testament when Genesis 15, 6, it said, Abraham believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted that unto him for righteousness. Well, some people get saved, and then pretty soon people say, you gotta quit this, you gotta quit that, you don't do this, you don't do that. Let me tell you something. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior under John 3, 3, or 1 Peter 1, 23, you are a new creature in Christ. Old things pass away, it talks to that in Corinthians, but I want to go to the scripture that says, now that you're saved, I want to go to the scripture today, Romans 8, 1. And listen to me now. It says, therefore, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine that? You get saved today, and all your sins, I always do it this way. You take a bushel basket, put all your sins in it, and take it to Niagara Falls, and go over Niagara Falls, and it goes out into the sea of forgetfulness. Isn't that nice? There's no condemnation, but the flesh is still the flesh. And what happens the next day? Well, you've got another bushel basket. You put it on Niagara Falls, send it out to see if we get with us. John 1, 12 says, to all those receive him, gave he power to become sons of God, even to those what? Who believe on his name. Getting back to where it says, believe. Many churches will say you have to do this. You've got to be water baptized. You've got to go to church every Sunday. No, you don't. The Bible is very specific. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a new creature in Christ. I want to close with this segment here today. Crossing Pass is trying to bring you people who have been through a lot of things, not just the problems I had and drinking and gambling and women and sex. How about the people who are workaholics? How about the people who are not going to church, have no desire to go to church? Can you be saved, be saved and have no desire to go to church? Yes, you can. But I promise you one thing, if you pick up the Word of God, you will have the desire to go to work in the church, or go to church. But don't think that, uh, you don't have to believe me. Pick up the scriptures and believe what the Word of God says. I leave you with this thought. Matthew 6, 34 says, Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil live thereof. In other words, live one day at a time. Make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior today. I want to thank you once again for tuning in to today's show. And like we always say, there's no word for coincidence. Everything is by divine appointment and according to God's sovereign will. So I thank you for tuning in to, the, to today's show. You heard a tremendous testimony on how the Word of God can set you free. Many of you know my testimony all the years in the NFL, and I mean, I was as pure as a snowflake. Made one bad decision to try steroids one time. And then within about a three-year period, I had lost millions of dollars, over, over a millions of dollars. Yes, yes. And I ended up spending three years in a federal prison. Now listen, do you think that was my goal? No, that wasn't my goal. <laughs> do you think that was Robert's goal? No, that wasn't his goal. A couple shows ago, we had a friend of mine, Mike. He overdosed by heroin, went to my church for years. Do you think that was his goal? No, it wasn't his goal either. So listen, my friend, let me tell you, it's not going to be your goal either. But we have an adversary, and his name is called the devil. And the only sword that you have is the Word of God. Amen. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is going to be the only thing that is going to cause you to become an overcomer. Thank you, Lord. And that's what Crossing Pass is about. That's what our life is about. I mean, that's the mission that I have in my life. That's what Don Reed's life is. That's why they're doing a movie on his life. 
It's a, it's a mission to help people like you. Jesus said, he come to set the captives free. He said, I come that they would have life and have life more abundantly. Praise the Lord. So this is what we want to offer you today. It's simple. It's simple to receive him. It's the commitment after that that you have to hold your end of the bargain. So what I want to do right now, my friend, is I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I'm telling you, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Amen. So please pray with me. Say, Father God, I ask you right now to come into my heart. I confess all my sins. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I've made mistakes. But I ask you to take this life and transform me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me this new life that they talk about. I commit my life unto you right now by faith. My friend, if you prayed that prayer today with us, I welcome you to the family of God. Please call in if you're local, 724-981-7777. And know this, we love you. Amen. When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature, and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. It's, it's a no brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like the sin. When you partner with Crossing Pass and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airwaves. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.